Thanks. All right, first up today, this beautiful butterfly. Next month, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service will decide if the monarch will have to go on the endangered species list. That's a big problem because these little creatures are big-time pollinators. That's why we need to protect them. That's right. Here to talk about what we can do as gardening expert, it's Melinda Myers, a.k.a. the plant doctor. Good <laughs> Hello. to see you. Hey, it's great to be here. And yes, Save the butterfly. Yeah, you're exactly. like a butterfly savior as well. Well, all of us need to work together to do it. It's a big job. And one reason the monarchs are so important, besides being beautiful and important pollinators, the habitat they need is the same for many of our native bees and other wild life. So they're kind of the indicator insect oh. that if they're disappearing, other insects that we depend on are in jeopardy. So there are a lot of things that we can do to create a habitat in our own backyard, no matter how large or small, to help support those monarchs and encourage them to come and visit. I always wonder how the government decides, like, do they go yeah. count, count all the monarchs? Yeah. And they're like, we don't they're got enough. They have we little tags have on their little legs. They do. There's a really, um, I was checking the website, and the monarchs on May 9th were as far north as Columbus, Ohio. There are people tracking their journey. They're moving a little slower this year, which is probably good because the milkweed, it's yes, it's cold, and the milkweed that they need to lay their eggs for the caterpillar seed is coming up slowly because of our cooler temperatures. But they do count the monarchs. That milkweed and they monitor. that we're looking at? Yes, this is common milkweed, and mm -hmm. that's the best food for our monarch caterpillars. And at night those flowers are very fragrant. It's a very vigorous plant so if you don't have a lot of room what you may want to do is remove the seed pods and I brought a few into oh, the studio. Oh you mean like it'll it'll grow it'll it, extend. Yes yeah. so okay. I've kind of spread a few seeds around the studio. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> um, and, but also they spread by underground rhizomes so you can have them in your city just pick out the pods if you don't want to share them with your neighbor. Okay. Kind of put them in an area where you can contain them but having common milkweed you'll enjoy the flowers you'll enjoy the caterpillars. There's some other Cute. milkweeds too that are a little less aggressive. This is Sullivan's milkweed. It's a variety, a naturally Pretty. occurring variety of common milkweed that's a little bit less aggressive. Okay. So, so that might be an option. So I want you to talk about as we're looking at these pictures what American Transmission Company is doing to help with this with the monarch butterfly to save them and then what we should do yeah, is we gotta common follow suit. Right and, yeah. and what's so exciting is we all want our power. You know we depend mm -hmm. on having the power and so their job is to make sure we all get our power. So we have these large utility overhead transmission lines, perfect place for pollinator friendly plants. So um, as they're clearing the way to put those up or taking care of the vegetation, putting in pollinator friendly vegetation and in areas where the monarchs tend to travel, mm -hmm. they're creating corridors. So what's cool oh. is these are big swaths of land and food. So if our okay. monarch can go and feed in a large area, it doesn't use a lot of energy going from flower to flower to flower, but rather one flower next to the next to the next to the next. And so it's supporting them as they're traveling north and then traveling back down south to their winter homes. Okay. So it's very exciting to see. And what's nice is if they have to do any repair work on the transmission lines, those native plants quickly recover. So it's a short term and long term investment. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can smell these plants already, <laughs> by the way. I mean, they smell so good and so fresh. So that's what they're doing. What can we do? Can we plant this in any kind of soil or? You bet. If you have full sun, the milkweeds are perfect plants. Okay. And that you saw an orange flowering one is the butterfly weed. And that's mm -hmm. one that blooms midsummer. Beautiful orange flowers, a little less aggressive, doesn't spread like well drained soil. That's the butterfly weed. And that's okay. a type of milkweed. Next, we have a swamp milkweed. And what's nice about that, if you're doing rain gardens, it those plants take wet soil and dry gotcha. soil. And a lot of people are doing rain gardens to manage our rainfall. Yep. And you can also help the pollinators as well. So okay. that's the food the caterpillars need to eat. One of the things we can do for some of the adults, have a flat stone in your landscape. because oh, yeah, it catches that water, right? Well, and also insects will spread their wings and warm up. They need oh, the heat. Oh. And it's a great photo op, too, because they'll often collect and warm up oh. midday. A little bit of water, something with sloping sides. I have just a tiny um, little dish here Cute. so that they can come and lap up the water. Mm -hmm. um, bury a shallow container with damp sand, sprinkle a little sea salt or wood ash, and they can then lap up the minerals. You'll see some bees as well there. So mm -hmm. it's very cool. So those and are some. Very small. You know, yeah. you don't need a huge area to, to, right. to be part of this. Exactly. And yes. there's whole monarch way stations. And then you mentioned plants. And there's some plants. This is a, a downy phlox. It's a spring bloomer. So I said the monarchs are on their way. So we yeah. want to make sure there's food. 
probably what you were smelling were the pansies in front oh. of the milkweed pods because they're very fragrant. Okay. So we've got bulbs and pansies they're ready. Yeah. And then we've got some natives like that downy um, flocks that we saw earlier. But the f And then this is Rattlesnake Master. Oh yeah, this is what I'm smelling. Yes. I smell that. That smells incredible. Oh yeah. Wow. Good for us. Yes. Good, for the, mm. good for the pollinators. Yeah. There are nature's visitors. light blue pansies. Whole host of plants you can be doing mid-May to October to plant. Exactly. Part of this, um, as our producer called it, the butterfly highway. Yeah, we exactly. always want them to have a path. Um, to be part of our um, environment because they're important and you gave us some great tips, things that we can all do. So you have this party for the planet coming up this Saturday and Sunday. American Transmission Company is doing this at the Milwaukee County Zoo. If you go to milwaukeezoo.org slash events, pe people can find out more about that. You bet. We'll be planting, so bring the kids of all ages. I find fun. adults have as much fun and we'll be kind of sprucing up the butterfly pollinator garden at the zoo in the family heritage area and there's fun activities happening in the main building building as well. That's cool. great. Go to the zoo and you can download a free ATC Grow Smart Pollinator Guide um, so you can get that full list of plants that yes. you can plant for yourself. ATC-GrowSmart.com and we're giving away this wonderful basket that Melinda brought to one of our lucky viewers. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in there. There's some malorganite, your book, some seeds. Seeds. Uh, uh, our seed this year is the blue, smooth blue aster, a native great fall bloomer for those season, those pollinators. A, di a digger's hotline trowel, call before you dig. Mm -hmm. and one of my books. I love cool. that. And a t-shirt. So call us now. Yeah, 414-799-4444. Cool. <laughs> Caller number seven wins the gardening basket. Great to see you. Thanks, Good Melinda. to see you. Thank, Thank you, you so much.